the W definitely doesn't want you to see this. Oh, but I get caught. What a mess. What's up? And a lot of people want to understand when they should use their points to stay at hotels or when they should just pay cash. But there's some secrets that you don't know and there's a way you should think about it and a framework we want to start to teach you. So I hope that by showing you how I think about it and the framework I've developed to understand when to redeem points versus when to pay cash, you can start to understand how to maximize your own points and get epic stays and go cool places like the W5 Pay. Since I'm traveling, I don't have anywhere to really write this out for you. Give me one second. Okay, hope you don't mind. I'm gonna show you how to do this. So our target is the W Type A. The W Type A in August for a Friday through Sunday stay is 50,000 points per night or 100,000 points for two nights. Okay, so 100,000 Marriott points total for those two nights here. And then what we have to do is look at what the cash side looks like. So same weekend, same wonderful king room with city view is going for, let me write down cash, 19,635 Taiwan dollars. And that converts over to $625 and 59 cents. So I'm gonna do this in USD. You can do it in whatever currency you want. So to do this analysis here, we take the, the cash rate and divide it by the number of points it would take the equivalent number of points that is. $625.59 US divided by 100,000 Marriott points gives us a point valuation of 0 0.0063. And I'm rounding on that three, being generous. So we're rounding up, this is a valuation here. Now that's far below the normal consensus value. Normally a Marriott point, we like to see a Marriott point at 0 0.008 or greater. So we don't see that here. So this is not ideal. We would not recommend doing that. Now there are a couple other ways you can go about this. You have the option to just pay the rate or you can use a car like the Chase Sapphire Reserve. So let's take a look at that because that's actually really interesting. If we use a Chase Sapphire Reserve, sorry, I'm running out of my whiteboard space here. If we use this Chase Sapphire Reserve, what we're basically doing is taking that cash rate of 625.59 divided by 0 0.015. So this is a CSR value here. And you're wondering, where does this five come from? Did normally value it out of cent? Yes, but with the CSR, you get a 50% bonus, so we can basically say that's 0.15. That turns into, if you want to not use any cash and you want to do this as a pure point play, that works out to 41,706 ultimate reward points. So right here, you can see the setup. You see it. Right here, you can see you have a choice of either 100,000 Marriott points or 41,000 Chase points. So if you wanted to get this and you're not using a bonus category like a Marriott property, you need to spend 100 grand. If you're using a Chase card, you'd spend 41 grand. But if you put it in a bonus category, such as travel, you basically get to divide that by three, and that works out to $13,900 on travel spend. So this is why we always say to use a bonus with a certain categories here. Now I'm not sitting around and spend 13 grand on travel to get a free two nights here at W Type A, but I just want to point out the difference in the amount of spend required to get the same exact experience. So we look at this down here, we don't need to spend 100 grand, we don't have to spend 600, we could use these chase points, or we can spend the 600. So oftentimes it's better just to go ahead and pay the cash rate. In this case, it's probably what we'd recommend, either using CSR or the cash rate. One cool thing you can do is you can use a partial amount of this. So say you wanted to spend $300 and like 20,000 points. That's a strategy we use all the time because it has a nice lock, you know, guaranteed rate at a 0 0.015. Now that being said, the chase points are transferable to Marriott. So if you find a good valuation, like we typically get something far greater than 0 0.08. We usually get 0 0.014 or greater is what I can usually find. Um, and that's usually when I pull the trigger on a points play. But this is not a points play at all. So we recommend trying to look at that, look at your options with Chase, look at a, maybe an Amex offer or something like that. That being said, you can transfer from Amex and from Chase 
over to Marriott and sometimes there's even a bonus like recently there was a bonus on the Amex where you get a 40% increase so one Amex point equaled 1.4 Marriott Bonvoy point. So sometimes it's you know sometimes it makes sense to pay the cash rate and get a use a bonus card like the Chase Sapphire Reserve or the Marriott Bonvoy Brilliant um, so you're earning points for a future stay where you do get a better redemption than this. Now when we're saying to pay cash we don't encourage people to hold on to points because they usually get devalued. Uh, that being said, we want you to be strategic and use them for trips that you really want to take and times when you really don't want to shell out the cash or when they're super good uh, redemptions, such as here when you can get something at 0 0.08 or 0.14 greater. Those are both great numbers. Definitely pull a trigger if that's the case. I hope that analysis helped you understand how to value your points and whether or not you should use points or pay cash. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to use points, other times it definitely does. We're all about maximizing the points on everyday spend so we can travel for free and travel in style. If you like this video, it would mean the world to us if you hit that like button and subscribe for more. Catch you around.